is mom and <laughs> there's Murphy. Welcome back to my channel and thank you for watching. If you're new here, I do around the house videos. Basically I clutter, so I'm always decluttering. I do cleaning videos, recipes, reviews, the occasional DIY craft project and so much more. the St. Patrick's Day. I figured I'd share with you how I made my little leprechaun friend here. I think he's adorable. Murphy likes to have a few St. Patrick's Day decorations around the house because you know she's an Irish wolfhound and I just really enjoyed making him and I figured I'd share it with you. So this is how I did it. In order to get the SVG file there's a link in the description box below. You may need to cut and paste that or you can just type in Leprechaun Centerpiece 2023 into Design Space and it should come up in the Community Projects. When the file comes over, it's going to come up in separate pieces. They're, they're grouped together, but they're separate pieces. In order to change the size on it, you need to highlight everything so every piece changes the size at the same time. However, you're going to notice there's a little exclamation point on the group line. For some reason, Design Space will not let you make this project when it's all grouped in one group. So in order to make it, you remember to ungroup it once you resize it. But to resize it, you need to highlight all the pieces. And then in the bottom right hand corner, just drag down that little white box to make it larger or push the box back up to make it smaller. I'm using the size that it is in the SGV file because it worked best for my 12 by 12 paper. So I didn't want to change anything with that. Another thing you may want to change is the colors. In order to change the colors, go to the right hand side and hit the color sync layer. This will group all the items that are of the same color. If you don't like a color of a certain item, all you have to do is go to the line that it's on Click on the object and drag it to a different color that's already there. If you don't like it, then you just drag it back. It, it is, it's very easy to change the color on this. Once you've decided on the size of your leprechaun and what color match you want to use, go to the top right hand corner, click on the make it button, and that will bring up a dialog box. This is asking you to pick what type of mat you're using, either you're using smart paper without a mat or a mat. You can use a combination of the two, but in this case, I only need the regular mat, so I clicked on that, and then you hit continue. It's going to bring up all the mats that you're going to use. The first one is the print and cut. Hold off on that one for a few moments, and let's look at the other ones. I have a lot of mats for this project, and I don't want to be loading the machine 18 times. With these flowers, I have three mats of flowers, and then I have another mat with the rainbow center, the leprechaun center and the other leprechaun center. I want to combine them on the other mats. So what you do in order to combine them is you pick the object you want to combine. You pick the object you want to move to the other mat, move it to the spot you want to put it in. And then in the left corner, you click on the little dialog box and it says move it. So click on move it and pick the mat you want it to go on. With this one, I have to move the carnation down a little and then the little leprechaun centerpiece up a little and it will fit. Do the same for the other one, pick another mat and it'll work out fine. One problem that I find in design space is if you have too many mats, sometimes you can't see them all. So a lot of times I will move the objects off the lower mats upward if I want to combine mats. That way I don't lose <laughs> all of the mats on the left hand side. It's a pain in the neck. It doesn't always work, but it's one way to do it. The first mat that's going to come up once you hit continue is going to be your print and cut mat. You want to print this first. You don't have to cut it out right away, but you do want to print it first. Make sure you hit the bleed button on this because you do not want a white frame around your rainbow after you cut it out. It doesn't look so good. So once you send that, send that to the printer, you can start printing out the other mats. While the rainbow is printing, you can set up the rest of your mats. I used medium cardstock with more pressure, and I do remember my settings usually. However, with this project, I was using one piece of paper that was not regular cardstock, and that was for the top of the pots of gold and the little shamrock. 
So just remember to change the paper setting when you are cutting those pieces out if you're using a different type of paper. Otherwise you can use the same paper setting the whole way through. These are the tools that you need to make my little leprechaun friend. You need the hot glue, regular glue, foam dots, a weeding tool to get everything off those mats, scissors, I don't know what they call that thing. It helps make straight lines on paper, sharp lines, I guess it is. A twirly thingy and some ribbon. First thing I like to do is lay out all my pieces. I have my base in one pile, my leprechaun guy in another pile, laid out in order, kind of, a little messy, but that's okay. My flowers and my rainbow. I'm going to start with my rainbow because I just want to put that off to the side and it has a couple of small pieces. So the first thing I really need to do is make sure my rainbow is laid out properly because some of these pieces will not line up properly if they're backwards. Like here, my pot of gold and my gold on top were not laying properly. So what I had to do was switch pieces to make sure everything is lined up so there's no gap. Double check everything. Otherwise, you're gonna have a wonky little piece. So it's better to spend a few moments lining everything up properly and making sure everything fits well before you glue it because sometimes it's hard to unglue things. I'm going to start with my rainbow piece first. Because this is a printed cut, the paper's a little flimsy. So that's why I have that plain white rainbow piece. It's just to give it a little extra stability. First thing I'm going to do is glue it to one side of my rainbow. Just make sure it doesn't stick out. You have to be a little careful about lining it up. And what you're going to do is place glue all the way from the top of the rainbow all the way down to the bottom of the tab and the cloud. It needs it all over this side and this side only. Once the inside and the one side of the rainbow is glued together, check to make sure the other side is in the right position so you don't glue something on wrong. Now when you go to glue this side of the rainbow, you are going to glue the rainbow and the cloud but not the tab on the bottom. So you're gonna go from the cloud all the way to the top of the rainbow, but not that little tab on the bottom because we're going to use this to help attach it to the base. Once you've glued the rainbow together, you can put it to the side. Now you need to glue the pot of gold together. First thing you wanna do is make sure you line up the pots of gold properly. They're going to be front front to back. So you're mirror, mirroring each side. Before you do anything, check to make sure the position of the gold pieces are on properly and everything will line up. Because if you do it wrong, it's going to look wonky. I know, because I did it wrong a couple of times. Once you've done that, glue the little pieces of gold to the top of each one of them. Make sure everything's lined up. I know I am terrible with glue, but it, you know, you can clean it up pretty easily. Anyway, make sure it's lined up properly and then glue on the little shamrock. Once I've glued the little pieces onto each of the pots of gold, I want to glue the gold onto the rainbow. At the end of the rainbow, you see it's a bit of a wonky end. It doesn't matter because you're not going to see it. I'm going to cover it with the pots of gold. When you glue the pots of gold on, make sure your rainbow is level because if it's a little wonky, your pot of gold is going to look like it's flying in the air. So you want to make sure it's pretty level when you do it. Just put glue on the back of the pot of gold. I put it all over the back of this one. You can just put it on the tab that's showing on this side because when I did it all over it, I realized I was making a mess. So <laughs> yeah, I did it backwards. What can I say? So glue it to one side and yet for some reason I was having a lot of problem with that little thing staying. And then just add a little glue to the back of the other one so it sticks properly and just, it, it, it's glued, just make sure it's lined up properly. That's the key to this, making sure it's lined up properly. Once I've assembled the rainbow, it's time to move on to the base of the centerpiece. This consists of the top and bottom piece, two side pieces, the center support piece and two trim pieces. The first piece I want to start with is the center piece. I want it to dry before I assemble anything. So this is the piece I want to dry first. First thing you're going to do is find the score line and have it facing you. 
bend away from you so it bends easier to push down each of these tabs. You want it to be pretty even when you're bending them down. So be careful. Don't rush it. Just get it the best you can do. Then take your, I don't know, I don't know what they call this thingy, and make a nice sharp line there so everything is nice and straight so you don't have anything that's wonky because if it's wonky, your whole centerpiece is going to be wonky. The next thing I need is my flower curling tool. I don't know the name of this either. And I'm going to it's like softening the paper so it doesn't crease when I bend it. So you're just going to roll it like you're rolling um, ribbon, like you're curling ribbon. And that's what you're doing with this. It, honestly, I don't mind which direction it goes in because I just want the paper to be flexible. So if I roll it one way, it's okay if I attach it the other way. Once I finished rolling it, I'm going to attach the two ends. They are going to be hot glued because I do not want to sit there and hold it for 20 minutes. So just take a bead of hot glue and put it on one end and bring the other piece together. Now you have to hold it for a few seconds, but it dries much faster than white glue. So that's why you want to use hot glue on some of the pieces here. When you're done, set that aside. Now you're going to use the piece that's the top and the bottom piece. This shape is from Design Space, so I didn't do much changing on it, so that's why it is the way it is. First thing you're going to do is find the score lines. There are three of them, only use one of them, and I find it best usually to bend away from the score line. Have the score line face you and bend away. So only use the top score line and the bottom score line, ignore the middle one. And then take your thingy that makes nice sharp lines and make a nice sharp line so the, the base holds well. Now you need the two side pieces. I think this was originally like a box that opened, but the way I have it set up, it doesn't. So the first thing I'm going to do is curl my pieces. You can either fold the tabs first or curl the pieces, but you have to do both with these things. So either curl it first or fold the tabs first. It doesn't matter. Just bend them away from you just like you did on this, the inner support piece and make sure you have a straight line when you're done. Again, the straighter the line, the better and more stable the base will be. You will then take your thingy, whatever you want to call it, and make a nice sharp line with it. When you finish this one piece, you go and do the same thing for the bottom piece. It doesn't matter, top or bottom, just do it for the other piece. The next thing you're going to do is attach one of the side pieces to your top bottom piece. The top bottom piece is a circle, a square, and then another circle. You take your long strip, your side piece, and that little tab on the end, you're going to put a line of glue on it and then line it up on one end of the square on this in this case it's going to be the bottom right hand side of the square make sure that first tab isn't before this the square it, it should be so i can bend it and make it nice and round in the end make sure that's lined up properly don't have it wonky because your circle will be wonky then you're going to do the same thing on the other side you're going to line up your tab and make sure it's in the right place add a little bit of glue and then attach it. The reason we use hot glue here is because it holds quicker and you don't want to spend 10 minutes holding these two pieces together in order to get it to attach. Now we're going to attach the tabs to the circle. Now I need to use white glue. The reason I like white glue here is because I can manipulate the paper much easier because sometimes I don't get it to attach properly right away so I need to shift it back and forth until I can get it in the right spot and if I use hot glue here it would attach too quickly and I would have one wonky base. Once the bottom half of the circle is attached I want to attach my inner support piece. I just, it doesn't have to be centered in the bottom perfectly. It's just enough to give it support. I'm using hot glue on here because I want it to dry fast. I don't care where it is. I don't have to position it perfectly. So I'm just going to use the end of my twirling sticky thing to push it down. And that's it. I don't need to do anything else with it. Now that the base of 
the circle is done. I'm going to attach the other side to the other circle. This must have been a box that you can open at one time. That's why it's designed this way, but it was the one I liked, so I didn't want to do too much changing to it. You're going to follow the same procedure. Put a tab of glue on one side. You can actually pretty much do the two tabs of glue at the same time on this and attach it to the square part. Make sure the tabs start after the side of the square, otherwise it will not attach properly. Then you're going to attach the other side. Add a little extra hot glue if the glue dried like mine did, because you know, that's what happens. Make sure you bring all the tabs up before you apply any more glue because they may get caught in the center piece there. So just make sure they're all brought up, add a little bit of glue to them and attach them to the top of the circle. I forgot to film part of it, but these two pieces of green trim are used to keep the box closed. As I said before, I think this was a box that you can open and I don't want it to open. So make sure you start with the two pieces in the back so you they're with the seams of the back of the box so the front of the box looks pretty clean one piece is smaller use the smaller piece in the back and use the larger piece to cover most of the front you'll see you'll have your lines towards the back and that's okay it's not perfect but it's it is as good as you're going to get you're going to put a little dot of glue pretty much over the two little pieces where they attach and just glue it down that way and then you're going to need your scissors and cut a little piece of the um, back piece of paper off because it's going to be too long and you don't want it to show too much. Any little mistakes you make here are going to be covered by the ribbon, so it doesn't matter, but you're not going to put the ribbon on just yet. Now it's time to put my little leprechaun together. Notice I've stacked everything pretty much in the order they're supposed to be in. They're not neatly stacked, but they're stacked the best they can be. Also notice, I have the two feet opposite each other. The feet that are hanging down are opposite each other because the left hand one is the back of my leprechaun and the right hand one is the front. So they need to mirror each other. So it's really important that you line everything up properly before you do it. What I like to do is I like to take everything off of my stack and just make sure the base pieces for each side are in the proper order. The two tab pieces should be on the same side and the two legs down should be on the same side. That way I know what side is what. Make sure If you have to mark front or back on each of these, do it so you know which way to do it because there's nothing worse than making them the wrong way. Now it's time for me to put my little man together. I like starting with the face side. I think it's easier for me to make sure everything's on properly when I start with the face side. So start with your base piece, which is actually your stockings, and your dark green piece, which is your pants layer. Make sure you line up everything before you do it. Make sure the hat is on properly. The tail of the jacket is another good clue. Then you're going to flip it over and add glue to it. This is a glue layer, but make sure you flip it over because otherwise you will have your little man's jacket on the wrong way. When you go to attach the pant layer to the base layer, use the hat, the arms, the ears, and even the little tail to help you line everything up properly. Everything should line up pretty well when you do it that way. Just make sure everything lays on there properly. The next layer is the mouth layer and it's also a glue layer. Again, double check to make sure it's going in the right direction and then make sure to flip it over. Don't forget to do that because otherwise you're going to be applying the glue to the wrong side and you don't want to do that. Don't forget to use the hat, the ears, the arms and the tail of the jacket to line everything up. Don't worry if you get a little glue on some of the edges of the red layer or any of the other layers. You're not going to see most of these pieces. The only part of the red layer you're going to see is the centerpiece because it's the mouth. The next layer is the whites of the eyes. You notice it has a cutout so you it shows where you're going to have your mouth. Line this up the same way as you lined up everything else. Make sure the ears and the hat are in the right position, the tail of the jacket. Flip it over and glue this layer as well. The next layer is the eye layer. I think this can be done in any color. I happen to do it in black. I think you can do it in blue, green, even orange if you want. You can do it any color you want. 
When you're adjusting any layer after the mouth layer, make sure that mouth is lined up properly. You want to be able to see that little bit of red through the little mouth hole. Otherwise, it won't look right. Now, the next layer is the eyebrow layer. I'm using this big piece of paper for two little eyebrows because I could not glue them on otherwise. I cannot handle little pieces of paper and expect them to stay. I lose them. So I'd rather do a big layer. This layer is a layer you, you kind of don't want to get too much glue on the outside because this is your face layer. This is going to be your face, your ears, and your hands. So unlike the other layers where only little bits and pieces are showing, this one's going to have a lot of it showing. So be very careful. Don't forget to line everything up. Make sure it's in the right direction. Flip it over and add glue to the back of this layer. The next layer is the shirt layer. It has a cutout for the face so you can see the face. It is one of the last bigger layers you have. Just be careful with it. I know I ripped mine when I was taking her off the mat, but that's okay because those areas are going to be hidden behind other areas. Just as long as it's glued down and the shirt area that you can see is not ripped, it's okay. Glue this layer down and try not to get any glue on the face or hands because on these layers it might show as you're doing it. Just be careful, line everything up properly and it'll be okay even if it's a little ripped. The next thing I'm going to put down is my jacket. This is a much smaller layer. I still want to make sure it's lined up properly and I'm just going to glue this layer down as well. After that, I'm putting on the hat layer. I know this looks a little funny and I could have attached the two layers together, but I really didn't want to because it wasn't going to lay right for me. Maybe for you it would be okay, but for me it wasn't going to lay right. The next thing I want to do is glue together the beard layer and the brim of the hat layer. I'm not going to glue them on my little man yet. I just want to glue them together because I find sometimes it's easier to glue smaller pieces together when they're not on a big object. Sometimes it's not, but sometimes I find it much easier to do that because I can align them a little better and manipulate them a little more when they're not attached to attached to something bigger. I'm going to set those aside for a second because the next thing I want to do is attach the collar of the jacket. It, this needs to go under the beard so it should not go on after the beard. Before you can attach the beard with the brim of the hat, you have to put the hat band on the base of the hat. Make sure it's in the right spot. You need the brim there to help you align it, but you need to glue the band down first and then you can glue the beard with the brim of the hat over it. You can also attach the little cuffs to the jacket as well. They can go on before the beard goes on or after. It really doesn't matter. I just happened to put them on before I put the beard on this time. Once the beard is attached, I can work on my shoes. There is a left shoe and a right shoe. Make sure you have the right shoe in the right spot. I like to glue the sole of the shoe to the top of the shoe before I put it on my little man because I find it really hard to line them up otherwise. When you're gluing the top of the right boot to the sole of the right boot, use the top of the boots pieces to line them up because the bottom of the boot piece is the sole and it sticks out above the top of the piece. It's a little hard. You'll see what I'm talking about. You have a little brown layer on the bottom. Once you've lined those up, you can glue your shoes to the base up piece. You're going to have a little of the base piece sticking through. That becomes your stocking. When you're lining up the left base piece, make sure you try to get the base of the boot to the bottom of the pants so it looks like you have a leg piece there. It looks a little better that way. Now I'm going to attach the three foam pieces the little shamrock at the hat, the nose that needs to be attached, and the bow. You may have to cut your foam pieces for these because they're really small. Just a little piece on either end of the bow works perfectly. Now, you when you put this together, you'll see there's a little green dot that goes in the center of the bow. I glued this on the day I cut this out. I cut this out a couple of days ago and I glued that little piece on because there was no way I was going to keep that little piece from falling into a crack somewhere and never to be found again. Now it's time to do the backside. 
double check before you go any farther. Double check to make sure you know what's going to be your top side so you don't do it backwards. Line them up. Make sure everything lines up correctly. The tail of the pants, the ears, and the hat are always my best way to line things up. Make sure I know which one is my top layer. Double, triple check. There's nothing worse than gluing everything together and not having it line up properly. Again, with this layer, you're going to start with the base layer and the pant layer. This layer has so many less layers. This side actually has so many less layers. And basically, they're all glue layers on this side. So make sure you line everything up and triple check before you glue anything down. Again, once you've lined it up, flip it over and then glue it and then flip it back so you have your layers on properly. After the pant layer, you're going to do your skin layer. This is your ear layer and your hand layer. None of the face is going to show on this layer, so it's only the ears and the hands. This next layer is your jacket and hat layer. Line everything up, make sure everything is in the right direction, flip it over and add glue. Remember, do the same technique on this side as you did the last side. Use the hat, the arms, and the tail to line everything up to make sure everything is aligned properly. Nothing's wonky. There's nothing worse than wonky. The next layer is the collar. It is the back of the jacket. You're going to line it up, make sure it's in the right spot, and just add glue to the back of this layer. The reason you're putting this layer on for the hair layer is because the hair will go over the collar and cover part of it. And if you didn't do it in that order, it would be so hard to get it on. Again, with this layer, I'm doing the hair layer and the brim of the hat layer together because it's so much easier to line them up before you attach it to the bigger piece. And it's so much easier to work with it that way. Once you're finished with that, line up the hat band layer. It should be pretty much the opposite of the front side. So line that up and put that on before you put the hair layer on with its hat band because otherwise it won't go underneath it. Again, you can put the hair layer on next or you can do the cuff layers. There's a little cutout in the cuffs that lets you know which side it goes on. And that's the easiest way to line it up and make sure it fits properly. Finally, you can put the hat layer on with the hair and it will go over the collar and over the brim of the, the, the band of the hat, whatever you want to call it. It'll go over that. Just a little glue on that layer, or in my case, a lot of glue. And just line it up using the, the hat, the ears, all those pieces. The last thing you have to put together on this side is the boot. It is the sole and the top. Put I would do the boot first and then attach it to the leprechaun. Put glue on the back of the top of the boot and use the top of the boot to line everything up. Don't use the bottom because the bottom is going to be where the little sole is and it'll line up better this way. And attach it with some glue. Now that you have the front and back made, line them up, make sure they align properly and glue the two sides together. The thing you have to remember when you're gluing this is not to put any glue on the tab. The tab is what we're going to use to attach it to the base of the, um, the, the centerpiece. If you put glue on it, it's going to be really hard to attach it. So I put my finger over the tab piece so I know not to put glue on it because otherwise I'd put glue on it. Now I found white glue worked better for this because it didn't dry as quickly and I can align them much better. So once everything is glued, align them up so they're aligned neatly and everything looks good. Now that the leprechaun is done, the last thing we have to assemble are the little carnations. Honestly, this is my least favorite part. They're a pain in the neck, but they look so cute and it gives it nice texture that you don't want to skip this part. I have 12 carnations in the SVG, SGV, SVG, S whatever. I have 12 of them in there. I don't know if you need 12. It depends on how you wrap it. If you wrap them awfully tight, you probably will need 12. If you wrap them loosely, you probably can get away with eight or nine of them. First thing you wanna do when you're making these carnations is manipulate the 
the paper. You want it to be as soft as possible. I manipulate the petals individually. You can roll them. You can curl them side to side. It doesn't matter. You just want to give them a little texture. You don't want them to be flat. I, I don't know. I don't love making carnations that are pain in the neck. But again, it made the thing look so cute. Once you've manipulated all the paper, you're going to start on the small end, the end with the small little flowers, and just roll them. Roll it all the way around. Yeah, this is a pain in the neck. I hate doing this. It takes forever, and I, I, I'm wonky every time I do it. Once I get it all the way rolled up, and let me tell you, this takes forever because there's one piece on this carnation design that I always have a problem with and I always end up having to hand roll the last pieces because of it I don't know it's just as you can see I have a little problems with it once I get them rolled up properly I take my hot glue gun and I put a glob of glue on the base of it and that round little piece at the end you fold over and press down I use my curly thingy majiggy to hold it down because I don't like to burn my fingers but hold it down until it dries and then you can fluff it out once it, dry, it dries. Do not try to do it earlier because it will fall apart if you do it earlier. Now that you have assembled all your pieces it's now time to assemble the centerpiece. First thing you're going to do is take your base piece. Your base piece has a back to it, so make sure that is away from you. You want your le little leprechaun to be facing away from the back piece. Take your leprechaun and decide where you want to put him on the base piece. His leg should be hanging over the side of it. Then take the two tabs and bend them. There are no score lines in the tabs. Just bend them enough so they both lay flat on the base piece of the centerpiece. Once you've determined where you want to put it and how it looks, take a little hot glue and glue down the tabs. One of the first things you're going to notice is that your leprechaun's a little wonky at this point. He's flapping back and forth and that's because he needs to be stabilized. The Carnations are going to do that, so don't worry about the fact that he keeps falling over. That's okay. Before you attach any of the carnations, you need to attach the rainbow. The rainbow is attached pretty much the same way as the leprechaun. You're going to use the two tabs at the base of the cloud to attach it to the base of the centerpiece. I like to position my rainbow a little behind the foot that is resting on top of the base. Leave enough room that you can get a carnation in there to help stabilize the rainbow as well. So just give it a little extra space behind it. Just put a dab of hot glue on each of the tabs and attach them to the base. Make sure you have enough room for those carnations because the carnations are going to, going to make sure everything is stabilized. Now that our two main pieces of the decoration are on, I want to add some carnations. Usually the first one I put on is the one right behind my little man because it will help him from flopping backwards. You can either put a glob of glue on the base of the centerpiece or you can put a glob of glue on the base of the flower. Either way works. Do whatever works best for you. It doesn't really matter. But you're just going to go around and put enough carnations on top of this centerpiece base to cover it completely. These flowers are going to help keep my little man up and straight. Now that you have the leprechaun, the rainbow, and all the flowers attached to the base of the box, it is now time to add the final touch, which is a ribbon. I like to put it over the center of the green band that I added to the box. I'm using a curling ribbon because I cannot tie a bow to save my life. Just eyeball the measurement of the ribbon. Just have enough to go past and curl it a little. You don't need a whole bunch extra, just enough. I like to start by centering the ribbon and gluing the two, two dots on the back of the box and applying the ribbon that way. That way it's pretty centered. The big glue pieces are in the back so nobody can see it. And it is pretty stabilized. I also like to add a couple of dots of glue on either side. Try to make these smaller because they might be seen. Just add enough so the ribbon isn't going wonky on the sides. Finally, I add a bit of a glob of glue in the front and I attach it there. I tie it first and then I attach the ribbon there. You are not going to see the glob of glue in the center because I'm going to cut a couple more pieces of ribbon and attach them there. And then I'm going to take 
a knife and just curl all the ribbon so it makes a nice little bow this is how my little man came out i think he's adorable he has a lot of texture he looks cute and he's so festive for the holiday i hope you enjoyed this video and if you decide to make my little friend you let me know how you made out anyway thank you for watching if you like this video hit the like button if you like more videos like this hit subscribe i'm murphy's mom and murphy's still taking a nap yep she's still taking a nap <laughs> see i told you bye for now